All right. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay, let's all stand and remain standing. And we are going to do flag salute together, okay? So we're going to start with the American flag. So let's uh, do the pledge with me. Pledge to the American flag. Begin. I pledge allegiance of the United States of America and to the one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, we got a nice echo. Okay, upper grade, slow down a little bit for kindergartners, okay? All right, pledge to the Christian flag, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believes. Okay, remain standing, and uh, I'm going to open in a word of prayer. Let's close our eyes, and we pray to God together. Our Heavenly Father, we are so joyful this morning because we can celebrate Christmas, the birth of, your, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, make it a special, special celebration that we can sing praises to you that we can understand the true meaning of Christmas. And we ask you to bless all the families as we go on Christmas break um, next week and the following week. Lord, give us safe travel if we travel. Lord, give us a good family time. But most important of, of all, remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. So let us celebrate together this morning in our chapel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all sit down and we are ready to begin.
Word of the day is omnipotent. Angels say what? What? Omnipotent means that God is all powerful. He knows everything, he is everywhere, and can do all things. Wow. wow. Attention everyone, it's time to check in on how we're all doing with our Christmas assignments of delivering shocking news to the world. Hallie, Lou. Yeah? Oh my goodness, I didn't see you there. It's like you just appeared out of thin air. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't forget to talk to those shepherds and please make sure little stars in place. Harold, I'm so nervous to light that way in that big sky. Nobody could ever expect that from such a tiny thing like me. Oh, sweet little star, don't you worry about it. God will give you the courage you need when the time is right. Gabriel, I see you're back. How did Mary take the news when you told her about God's plan? Was she blown away? I'm glad you asked, Joy. It went something like this.
Kelly, Lou, yeah. yeah? What are you two excited about? You're walking on sunshine. We've been waiting for months and months, and tonight we finally got the chance to tell the shepherds that our Messiah is here. You should have seen their faces. Angels say what? What? Joy, did you not hear the multitude of heavenly hosts singing? <gasps> is that what that was? Gabriel, we've never heard something so beautiful, and it probably caught Joy off guard to hear all those angels. It's like they were knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Yeah. Anyway, the important thing is why the angels were singing. Here comes the sun. It was so amazing that I think we ought to sing it again. Oh, I just love hearing everyone worship together. I can't wait for everyone to finally lay eyes on our little Savior.
It won't be long now. Little star, it's your time to light the way for the people to come and see what God has done. Angels say what? What? Don't worry, little star. You were made for this moment. God chose you to shine. T- God cho- chose you to shine his light on his holy ground. You're right. It's not about me and how nervous I am. It's about doing my part to glorify God. I'm ready. Remember the birth of God's son is bigger than all of us. It's the greatest story ever told. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child of Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him.
forget this night. Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. And to think God gave us a front row seat to not only watch, but shock the rest of the world with the whole story. We all display God's glory through things only he could have created us for. Isn't it crazy how the Christmas story has unfolded in such unexpected ways? Little star, you were so beautiful. I couldn't believe how bright you were. I was about to take off my sunglasses. Yeah, way to hang in there, little star. Angels say, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Hallie, Lou, yeah? yeah? Why don't you two use all the energy and sing with the rest of us in joyful worship to our new king?
Well, good morning, students. Yeah, some of you guys said that correctly. You guys said, good morning, Pastor Toby. The other ones that may not know me, don't worry about it. My name is Toby Yu, and I'm the youth pastor. You guys can all have a seat. Thank you very much. I'm the youth pastor here at this school, meaning that I get to preach uh, in our middle school chapel sometimes. I get to talk with the teenagers in our school, and they're really cool, all the guys back there. Um, but... I've never got to meet all of you guys all together like this before, and I'm super excited to be here this morning. Now, I have a question for you guys, and I just want you to raise your hand if this applies to you. Have any of you guys ever played the game of checkers? Raise your hand. You have? Awesome. Put your hands down. How many of you guys like to play the game of checkers? Raise your hand. All right, many of you have played it, and all of you like it, but a good number of you guys, right? Checkers was one of the first board games I ever learned to play. And this is a pretty simple game. You have two different teams, and each team takes turns moving one piece at a time. But as you know, in the game of checkers, you can only move forward diagonally. You can only move forward diagonally. And the goal of this game is to invade the enemy's territory to get to the other half of the board and at the end of of the game, be the last person standing, right? You want to be the last person standing after all the pieces have been eliminated. And if you want to eliminate one of the pieces, what do you have to do? What do you do to eliminate one of your opponent's pieces? Yes, just yell it out. You have to jump over them. You have to jump diagonally forward, right? But the rule is, in checkers, no matter what, you can only move diagonally forward unless, unless. There comes a time in the game where as you're moving forward, as you're moving your troops strategically across the board, if you're able to survive the dangerous task and the dangerous trek across the entire lava-infused checkerboard, and you reach the enemy's baseline, what do you say to the opponent? King me. Two words. King me. Your opponent then, when you get to that baseline, that opponent, he or she has to crown you as king. By taking a piece of your own color, turning it upside down sometimes so that there's the little crown that's showing on the other side, and stacking it on top so that your piece now is taller, is bigger, and is more powerful. Because as a king, part of your kingly powers in checkers is that now you can move forward and backwards which gives you a huge advantage. I love that phrase, king me. Everybody say, king me. King me. King me. One more time. King me. Very good. What does it mean to crown someone and make somebody else king? Right? When you're crowning somebody else as king, that means you're giving them extra power. It means that that that, that, that the king has, has power and authority and rule in your life. Well, as we just sung about, as we heard this morning, when you guys sang, Behold the newborn king, as you guys sang, Waiting for a king, Christmas is all about the birth of a king. A king. King Jesus. But you guys know what? Jesus wasn't some ordinary king He was a very different king. He was a very special king. He was a king that was different from all other kings because he did things differently from the way other kings did them. Even from the very first day he was born, the king, Jesus, was different. First of all, he was born a king. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, says this, These wise men, they came from the east, and they asked, well, where is he who who has been born king of the Jews? 
Imagine being born a king. They said, well, where, is this, where is this person who's been born king? Who's been born king? Imagine being born a king, right? Jesus was different. Most kings, they're born where? They're born in a palace. But not Jesus. Where was Jesus born? He was born in a stable. He was born surrounded by donkeys and sheep and cows. Right? Most kings, they spend all their time building up their riches, their gold, their crowns, their jewelry. But this king, Jesus, he owned nothing at all. Most kings surround themselves with, with, with servants and people to serve them. And Jesus chose to become a servant. Most kings surround themselves with servants. This king chose to become one. And oftentimes he was the one that was getting down and dirty to help other people, right? Jesus was a different kind of king. He didn't live the high royal life like most other kings lives. Other, other kings, they ride in a town in this big, bold, stable horse. Not Jesus. He comes riding in a town on what? A donkey. A little great donkey. And then, Think about the people he surrounded himself with. Most kings surround themselves with other kings, elite people in society, royalty, but not Jesus. Most kings surround themselves with people who dress nice, who behave properly. But Jesus, this, this backwards king, this upside-down king, he surrounded himself with smelly fishermen, with tax collectors, with people who were sick, with people who were poor. He was often seen eating with sinners, right? Jesus did everything so differently from all the other kings. Jesus did things so differently that people got sick and tired of him. They didn't want him to have any power and authority and rule, and so they made a plan to have him arrested and put in prison. <gasps> I know. And you know what? That plan actually worked. That plan actually worked. Jesus was arrested. And when he was brought into court, in Luke chapter 23, there's a guy named Pilate. And he asked Jesus to his face, Hey, Jesus, are you king of the Jews? Are you the king? Jesus never denied it. He said, basically, well, if you say I am, if you say so, it sounds like that's what you're saying, Pilate, that you're the one calling me king. That's what happened with Jesus. And instead of people praising him and saying, hail to the king or long live the king, what did they yell out? Crucify him. Kill this king. And so they did. They nailed him to a cross Instead of fashioning a royal crown made of gold and jewels, they placed a crown made of what? Thorns on his head. And it was there on that cross, it was there that he died. They put his body into a tomb that was, didn't even belong to him. It was a borrowed tomb. And you might think to yourself, man, Jesus was a different king. All the world's kings at that time behaved this way hung around the high and mighty, conducted themselves a certain way, hung around certain people, but not Jesus. He's a different king. What a king Jesus is. A king who was humiliated, a king who died on a cross. But the story doesn't end there because this king, Jesus, this upside-down king, came back to life rose from the grave to live forever, and he rose to show who really is king, who really has all the power, who really has control over all. Now, like I said from the very beginning of my message, Jesus was no ordinary king. He's the forever king. He's the king to anyone who chooses him to be their king. And he wants to be your king too. He wants to be your king too. And this morning, if you choose him to be your king, to have power and authority and say in your life, you will live with him for forever 
Even though we are not perfect ourselves, we will be given perfect standing before a holy and righteous king. And so let me encourage you this Christmas morning. Well, this isn't Christmas morning yet. But during this Christmas season, let's make Jesus the king he deserves to be. Let's crown him. When he says, king me, this holiday season is all about me, let's make sure we do that. Let's crown him as he says to us, king me. Let's pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, King of all kings, God, this Christmas season, we crown you king of our lives. And so, God, I pray that you will help every student this morning. Help us to understand, not only acknowledge that you are real, not only acknowledge that you exist, but, God, help us make you Lord of our hearts. Help us give you complete control of our lives. In the times when it's hard to surrender and do things your way, God, may we, rem may we remember that you are the only king that we are to surrender to. And yes, that will mean that we'll have to endure some, some pain, some hardship, some sufferings, like your son Jesus Christ did, like you went through. But God, we know that until we make you king of our lives, we're doomed. We're lost without you. And so God, during this Christmas season, may we remember Christ. May you have this Christmas and may we crown you king as you deserve. May we king you this Christmas. I pray all this in your son's most wonderful name. Amen. Thank you guys. Let me turn things over now to Mrs. Chu. Wow, that was so, such an awesome chapel today. We got to hear so many of your beautiful songs and voices and worshiping the Lord, worshiping our King Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about, right? It's about God sending his son to love us and show us his great way for salvation. So we just love our Jesus, right kids? <laughs> All right, so I say Mary, you say Christmas. Mary? 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 All right, Merry, Merry Christmas to you all. I only have one little announcement, and that is you all are going to have a, a long winter break, and you are going to come back on a Tuesday, not a Monday, Tuesday, January 3rd. All right, Tuesday, January 3rd, I hope you all have a safe, happy break and just have lots of fun with your families. So I'm going to release you all now and um, middle school, you all may, may go first. <laughs>